Hello, and a very warm welcome to our Lenti Royal YouTube channel. Just look at the picture of the Queen inspecting newly fledged officers at Sandhurst's passing out ceremony. Even in profile you witness her cried back in 2006 as she looks up at Captain Wales, as if thinking, who'd have thought that scamp would turn into this fine young man? Sword in hand, her grandson flushes scarlet, stifling self-conscious giggles as a cheeky grin stretches ear to ear. It is a picture to treasure, because it encapsulates the very special relationship between a grandparent and grandchild. And as the storm clouds swirl around the House of Windsor, it is worth remembering the achingly poignant bond that has long existed between Queen Elizabeth and Prince Harry, a bond that now seems under threat as never before. At the weekend, the Sussexes released an extraordinary statement aimed squarely at the Queen's decision to refuse them the right to continue using the brand Sussex Royal, claiming the monarch has no jurisdictions over the words royals. Their response has resulted in criticism from royal observers, with Tom Bauer, Prince Charles's biographer, saying, The comments smack of spiteful fury. I fear it will get worse. This and other recent developments within the royal family are enough to plunge any loyal monarchist, and I am one, into deep gloom. I can hardly bear to talk about what most thinking people surely see as catastrophic errors of judgment in the way Prince Harry and Meghan have acted and spoken. But that's not what most grieves me. When I look at all the wonderful photographs of Harry with his grandmother, I am not seeing a great monarch and a prince of the realm. No, I contemplate an adoring grandmother and loving grandson, and want to weep at what he has stepped far away from, and how she must hurt for what is lost. An old Italian proverb says, As if nothing is going well, call your grandmother. Where the parent-child relationship can be complicated, grandparent-grandchild interactions have the freedom to be far more relaxed and accepting. And it goes far beyond the cliché of handing them back at the end of the day. It's about knowing about parenthood and loving a second crack at getting it right, without all the tension. You have only to look at a wonderful portrait of the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh at Balmoral, with their first four grandchildren to sense the truth of that. Sitting cozily between his grandparents, merry little Harry looks out with laughing confidence, as happy as it's possible for a child to be. Years pass, the images multiply, the story is the same. Here's Harry making a goofy face to make Granny smile. There he is teaching her about FaceTime on her mobile phone, to the Obamas no less. The whole sequence of pictures is a delightful story of intergenerational warmth. At the 2008 wedding of his cousin, Peter Phillips, another sad story there, Harry beams as he stands behind his grandparents. Something has entertained them both, but what matters is that Harry's gaze is fixed on them. It's clear he is reveling in their mood of relaxed enjoyment, and seconds later he leans forward to whisper in Granny's ear, giving her a kiss too. It is a beautiful picture of tenderness. The Queen's Christmas Day broadcast in 1984 came from the heart of a grandmother thrilled at a new baby. Over film of Harry's christening she said, The happy arrival of our fourth grandchild gave great cause for family celebrations. But for parents and grandparents, a birth is also a time for reflection on what the future holds for the baby and how they can best ensure its safety and happiness. To do that, I believe we must be prepared to learn as much from them as they do from us. We could use some of that sturdy confidence and devastating honesty with which children rescue us from self-doubts and self-delusions. We could borrow that unstinting trust of the child in its parents for our dealings with each other. Above all, we must retain the child's readiness to forgive, with which we are all born and which it is all too easy to lose as we grow older. Without it, divisions between families, communities and nations remain unbridgeable. We owe it to our children and grandchildren to live up to the standards of behavior and tolerance which we are so eager to teach them. The trouble is, 
those children grow into adults and become influenced by stronger personalities and the ways of the world. Parents and grandparents have no choice but to let them go, watch them make mistakes and then, well, just wait and see. At least the photographs of happier times prove the permanent truth of precious moments. The camera does not lie. Harry may have changed and moved away, but I've no doubt our queen is as steadfast as she was in that 1984 Christmas broadcast, when she also reflected. So above all, we must retain the child's readiness to forgive. But how long can she hold to this sentiment in the face of that churlish outburst from Vancouver Island? In other news, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's security situation has been branded unworkable as it's revealed that the couple's cost could soar to $26 million a year. Experts claim the couple's jet-set lifestyle could leave the police unable to cope as they undertake trips to various countries in order to establish their own brand away from the British monarchy. A row has reportedly broken out as to who will foot the bill to keep the couple and their son Archie safe as they continue to live in Canada. The independent couple could push costs to the extreme as they continue to act, as the rules don't apply to them. Di Davies, former Net Protection Officer said their situation has called for a complete ripping up of the rulebook. In their current state, the plans are unworkable. There is already a severe lack of trained officers, and this is only adding to the Met's woes. Harry, Meghan and their son Archie have been in different locations over the last few months and officers are believed to be drafting new plans to double their protection team. Harry and Meghan's security bill could soar to $26 million a year, sparking anger and a row over who will foot the bill. Now, there is a staffing crisis within the team that supports the Royals and that Scotland Yard is facing increasing demand from them. It calculated that estimations of $4 million to $8 million a year were inadequate, and that Harry and Meghan would need at least 12 protection officers, who earn salaries of $138,000. It is believed to have stated that the Met has been told to deliver the calculations to the government, and that costs could reach $26 million. The couple still require effective security for their young family. Security sources said that there is no agreement or concrete plan in place when it comes to who will actually fund their security team. Labor MP Stephen Doughty said he supported the couple's choice to embark on a more private life, but added that questions over costs needed to be addressed. His comments come as cuts have been made to local police forces up and down the country, leaving many towns and cities struggling to police their respective areas. It has been estimated that costs for their security include a $7 million bill for officers stationed at Frogmore College in Windsor, while the couple reside in the UK. They are due to officially leave the British monarchy on March 31st. The Met said they were unable to discuss matters of protective security. Another report. Meghan and Harry are set to rake in a staggering $1.3 billion after Mexit. A top financial expert says. By cutting royal ties on March 31st, the pair are free to pull in hundreds of millions from a commercial empire based on book and TV deals, public speaking gigs, brand partnerships and fashion lines. Robert Watts, compiler of Time's Rich List, estimates the couple are on course to triple the $462 million net worth of the Beckhams. After probing Harry and Meghan's financial background, Mr. Watts said, You can't underestimate the international appeal of being a royal. And the appeal is even bigger in the US, Canada, and the rest of the world. I think it's possible that in 10 years' time, Prince Harry and Meghan could make it onto the Times' rich list with $650 million and $1.3 billion in the longer term. Please support Growing LNT World Channel. My subscribe channel, like and share videos hour. Your support is the motivation for us to produce better videos. Don't stop.